Um, so the muscle structure of the leg for its, uh, in itself is coming together really well. And I noticed in some of my uh, underwater and fish reference that um, there are crabs that have the ability to compress their claws quickly. And they have this bulbous section with all the meat in it that controls the this trigger. And when it releases it and hits something, it actually breaks the sound barrier. It's, the, it's so fast and it strikes objects so hard that it creates plasma underwater. It kind of blows um, actually shocks and explodes underwater. You can see the plasma fire that it creates. It hits it so quickly. Um, and that's kind of where I was going with this. That muscular pack at the front of the leg controls the trigger for these claws at the front. And I think that that makes sense. So I was trying to answer, go back, look at the reference, and make sure phys in terms of physiology that sort of worked with uh, with what I had sculpted. And I think it does. I think there's enough um, anatomy um, being suggested there to, to make it feasible. Um, and I always like to add a little bit. I want to make sure my characters have the feeling of weight. So on the, the foot, um, we just did a little packing out on the sides of the toe, that front section, and then use the clip brushes to clip it off and flatten it out. And it gives it a sense of weight and pushing meat out the sides. So now we're back up here to the torso. Um, and one of the things I noticed with Dynamesh is that your standard smooth brush uh, doesn't, um, doesn't move as quickly with a Dynamesh. It's just a lot more information. Um, and I think like with any divided uh, mesh, it, it, it works much slower at higher subdivision levels. Um, but Pixelogic, anticipating that, I think have uh, uh, done a really good job of, of adding extra brushes um, uh, for you to look at. So if you press comma, go to the light box under brushes, smooth, there are a whole set of smooth brushes you should check out. And the one I'm using in this case was strong smooth. And it just uh, smooths out everything a little bit better, a little faster. Um, now what I've done here is use the, use the mask. Uh, I just painted on a mask across this shell, this face shell, um, made that a poly group using the one of the new uh, features in, in ZBrush uh, that I learned from one of uh, Paul, Paul uh, Garbery's um, videos and turned that uh, masked area into a poly group. Uh, once you have that polygroup, you can do whatever you like to it. Uh, in my case, what I did was uh, um, reverse the mask, selected the move brush, and uh, while moving, press control. And as you move, it creates new loops of poly polygons. So you can actually create new um, a new mesh and basically extend loops until you're, um, you've got enough information there to do what you wanted to do. In my case, I just wanted to create a pit without stretching my polygons too much, so it worked out great to create new, uh, new polygons for this sort of, um, what are going to become uh, eye slots for this uh, character. It's interesting to note here that this, this section became a little tedious, um, and I realized why after. the. Uh, the front and back edges were so close to one another during the redyne, like when I dynameshed, that it uh, fused the vertices in the back and front side, and I wasn't able to smooth it out. But uh, just doing some sculpting there and uh, redynameshing, uh, basically, we were able to get rid of that. Took a little time to figure out, but um, in the end, worked out well. Um, and this is, uh, I love the flexibility of dynamesh. Um, I really do. It's it's pretty fantastic to be able to go from to go basically anywhere you want um, without having to worry too much about you know how to get there. It's just that you can get there is absolutely amazing. Um, so this shell face, this particular shell mask, we'll call it, is um, one of the things that uh, in Red Sands is becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, the characters um, have this sort of protection over the sensory pack. Um, you know, we 
our faces are just a collection of sensory organs. Um, or our largest sensory organ, the touch, is all over the place. But, you know, and, and for these characters uh, to kind of share that physiology and that it's everything is packed at the head for um, sight, sound, taste. And uh, they also have a, the, the, uh, the tongues, which are um, uh, sensors in themselves. This is interesting when there was such a deep uh, pit there that when I redynameshed it actually cut it off and created an, a, a, a form inside of this shell. Um, I wasn't anticipating that when I discovered it. I, all I did was, you know, and when you when something uh, uh, unusual happens uh, when you're doing work with Dynamesh, uh, one of the things I always do is go back and uh, auto group in polygroups and separate out the parts that are um, giving you giving you problems or have just cropped up unexpected ones and you can just hide those and then delete hidden and it's a, just a quick way of getting back on course it's good to know these little things too is everybody is going to run into issues um, um, whether they are uh, user uh, driven issues or zbrush uh, limitations but once you've discovered how to deal with those, just moving through them quickly is, you know, finding a way through it is more important than going backwards. Um, just keep moving forward, whatever you got to do. Oh, there's that wonderful uh, move and control option to create uh, loops. So what I've done here is just draw that out again, masked off the bottom side of that form and the top side and left the sides completely uh, open for for sculpting and just smoothed it out just so I can start uh, defining the form of the shell uh, face a little bit more or the shell mask so very much like um, crescent eyes there will be a uh, this is a pretty common form for some of the characters uh, for a certain set of characters, I should say, in Red Sands, is that they do have a uh, a protective shell over the sensory pack, and they're fairly bulbous and mollusk-like uh, in their approach. Um, through these slots in the head, there's going to be uh, sort of eye uh, eye protrusions, um, and it just makes uh, it makes for a very strange character, but also uh, physiologically very interesting. Of course I, always, I like that S shape as well. There's something about it that uh, appeals to me. So I find that I'm kind of referring back to that in a lot of overall forms of the characters as well as um, I kind of do, I repeat those wave patterns in a lot of the characters, um, other features. So we're continuing on here. Um, one of the things I was trying to do with the shell here is just create some sense of anatomy behind this piece, um, making sure that it made sense um, to me uh, in the way I wanted the way I want the the, uh, the character to to see and how I want it to read. Um, it does begin to look like you know a set of eyes there. Um, and in, as we get further along, I think that becomes more and more um, stands out more and more. You'll be able to see it. Um, but the forms are that, that I start to create sort of brow shapes and eye shapes um, inadvertently, you know, become forms of the eye. Kind of mimicking those similar forms. Uh, these these little pits on the side of the head, I think, are are fun little sensory pits. And there will probably be more more of those coming as well. Um, and I never really I, I never really call a portion of the sculpture finished, or uh, until the whole thing is brought up to the same level, and then I'll move on to the next step. Um, uh, things are going to change from 
you know, one decision about an area of your sculpture is going to change um, how you address the next stage. So I'll take a, a portion of the sculpture so far, move on to the rest, come back to that part and readdress it, and try and bring areas of the sculpture up um, to the same level uh, across the whole thing. And it's just easier to evaluate, um, you know, the overall look of your character if you're not viewing it at, you know, seven different steps across your whole piece. If you're just developing it up all at the same time, uh, roughly in the same manner, um, to the same level, it, it just becomes much easier. So let's go back to, let, let's talk a little bit about, again, our, our principles of anatomy there. I think one of the things that, that works out well for me is just taking, going through my reference and finding similarities between so many different variations of creatures across our own planet, but understanding how those um, principles uh, work from character or from creature to creature is really important. Um, when your characters become so strange and so weird that, you know, the reference you're drawing from has no sort of plausible where to go, um, you've got to be able to break down um, your reference to a point that you can apply it to your some of your strangest characters and forms and make it make sense. And to do that is just, uh, and one way to do that uh, for me has been to just develop or, or take so those core concepts that I'm, I'm viewing and reduce it down to the the minimum thing I need to make it work. I've said it, I think I've said it before here is just the, the flexor and extender. Being able to flex and extend a digit is probably the ba the most basic motion um, for characters. So you need to have a muscle on the top and the bottom. You're going to need area, you need, you know, skin on the, more skin on the back than you do on the front. Uh, and there's two different types of finishes to those skin to allow for stretching and compression. At its minimum, that's basically what you need. When you have to have uh, your you have to have your forearms flip up and down or your feet turn in and out um, or muscles around the waist to allow for spinning and twisting and bending you need to you know make those considerations based on other anatomy reference uh, similar but not exactly per you know, as exactly as shown on other animals. Um, and I think breaking it down to those the sort of simplest principles allows you to apply it in more areas than you would uh, if you just were taking literal reference or literal, literal animal elements and sort of pasting them together to create a character. And there's a place for that. Um, zoological reference and animal reference is important. Um, and it's a great way to start uh, to understand anatomy. I don't know all of the muscle groups. I don't know all of the insertions or the names of every bone or muscle. Um, but I have books there that can tell me that when I need to know. Uh, and if I have to develop a, you know, I'm trying to develop a, a, a good vocabulary artistically so that I can move forward in my designs without being hindered by uh, the names. Uh, one of the, and it just comes from the understanding of how those objects, um, forms work together or move together, uh, and the like. So here's a case where I've taken the uh, torso dynamesh and divided it, and I'm moving on to a secondary forms. So I have all my primary forms: the muscle structure, bulbous areas. There are suggested muscle um, packs, and like in the lower, um, uh, in the um, in the lower legs and, and limbs, we're working a, a bit on compressive areas, skin texture, and uh, and trying to sort out um, you know, what type of skin I want in these areas that makes sense for me as a, as a character guy. And we started out small. I've just switched to the dam standard brush and um, 
uh, it, it does a great job of creating a crease while pulling up forms on either side of that crease um, to create a, a really nice believable um, wrinkle and shape kind of cutting in while while building up at the same time which is really nice you know and don't you don't have to spend time reinventing the wheel there uh, that brush is fantastic and it gets you moving quickly as well um, I don't use a lot of um, a lot of alphas um, at this stage uh, I like to to sculpt in all of these by hand I like to do the work and make my work uh, original um, there are a ton of alphas there's a, a lot out there that you could draw off of and they all work well and it is a it is a choice um, that works and gets you there pretty quickly but a lot of people have access to that same reference and same alphas and everything so you've got to mix it up and uh, do a lot of the work yourself and hand work to keep your your sculptures yours and uh, you know definitively recognizable as your own work um, I will use some alphas later sort of as micro details to get uh, some other shapes and things going um, and I've gone through and I've just done a little quick um, BPR render with a, a material I threw together pretty quickly just using a lot of the wax modifiers and uh, I think it's a quad material that I use there So just um, sort of in the grand scheme of character here, we've got uh, these two large bulbous elements coming out from behind, or from beneath the collarbone, running up the side of the neck on top of the musculature and into the side of the face. And these basically are the uh, tracks or the tubular structures, internal tubular structures for what's going to be coming out of those two slots in the face. And I've kind of considered, you know, as, I, as I've gone, how that's going to work, created a base form there, as you can see, coming up from the collarbone, up the neck, and then turning quickly in behind that shell mask. And I'm just working basic overall wrinkles here. Nothing is a straight line. I'm trying to kind of break up the surface uh, into um, sort of a finer wrinkle. Uh, and I may go back and add, uh, well, we've got a lot of sculpting to do. I'm going to go back and, I'm sure, touch these areas uh, more and more. But every time you, you do that, you if you're making uh, sort of informed decisions based on good reference, it doesn't just, you know, it affects your sculpture positively. It lends credence to everything uh, and believability. There we are, noodling away. This is a great technique, and I really, you know, all the work you do by hand shows. Um, and there's some considerations for flexing and compression here. The arms are going to move forward in the grand scheme of things. The pecs compress. You have wrinkles, vertical wrinkles in that area. But the motion of the arms and chest are so broad that um, you just want to make sure you've got some directional wrinkles, wrinkles that... Uh, suggest um, multiple avenues of motion in those locations. That's one of the things that uh, I try to keep in mind when I'm moving into this type of uh, this stage of, of uh, detailing. And these are far from final details. These are um, the first step of many in getting a, uh, a realistic finish. So here we are, we're going into the hands. We have the Damien Standard Brush uh, working here, creating the creases for the fingers, um, some buildup in certain areas, and some uh, uh, um, creases in others. Uh, it works really well for the knuckles, and it really does make a, a difference uh, if you're going back to good reference in how these areas read physically. And they are a strange area. There's a lot of large wrinkle forms and then laying on top of that smaller wrinkle forms. And if you're just looking at your own knuckles, there is some really interesting um, forms going on there. 
Um, and I use, again, going back to my own hands here, referencing elements that I don't have one finger like that, I swear. But, uh, uh, you know, I have a finger that uh, I can take certain elements from that, that lend credence to this particular area. Now, one of the things, I've heard this said before, too, you know, if you, if you do a good job in the hands and a good job on the head, people will forgive you for the rest. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> no, it's, if you, you know, these are the, the heads and hands are two of the most difficult forms in the body. There's so much going on in there that a good time spent on your, your end figuring out how those work and, um, you know, f physiologically how they function and why uh, is really important. Uh, you know, it, it's always important to, for me anyway, has been to understand the why because it drives everything else. Uh, it drives all the decisions in terms of your and how it moves, why it moves, and how it affects the rest of the body systems including skin, the fat in the hands, the, you know, the muscles and everything in those locations. And we can start to, and it also drives the other decision making. Like when you're through this step, scarring um, does he eat with his hands you know depending on how you develop this arm and fingers and everything how does he pick stuff up how does he feed himself what type of tools does he use what is it about those forms that make uh, you know that, that allow him to, to function in the world that you're you're throwing him into so it's important if you if you if you want your characters to feel real and believable that you put uh, for me anyway it has been important for me to sort of drive the um, you know to ask those questions I'm sorry at the uh, through the construction of the character so that you're you know you're lending believability to all your all your elements and it's interesting going back and watching this as I narrate there's stuff that I will go back now and adjust that you just don't notice at the time you're creating your piece. I think this just as an exercise in, you know, developing, you know, not just sharing information and processes, but um, has been interesting to watch myself work. Um, and you can pick up a lot of strange things that you do that you never thought you did, or th considerations you should have made before step number three. Um, there's some forms in the fingers that I think I'm going to go back and just double check before I move forward. So there we are, we're getting on to um, detailing some of these elements. I think it's important just as an overall uh, approach is that uh, stay fluid. Apply the base principles of anatomy and muscle structure and layout so that you know keep it loose so that you can apply it to the ever stranger characters you create the ever growing pile of weirdness that you know comes from your uh, your dreams or your subconscious or whatever it makes for a really fun and interesting uh, adventure <laughs>